Welcome to your video lesson of today, in which we're going to be talking about language and linguistics. Well, this is going to be your, your lesson, and uh, we're going to be talking about language and linguistics for several lessons, actually, because it requires more of our attention. So let, let us start with no further ado with the contents. Okay, we're, we're going to go through the explanation of linguistics. What is language and the features of language, which actually this part features of language. Uh, we're going to be checking that for a long time and well, for several videos, actually, we're going to be checking every single one of the details of the features there. Then in today's lesson, we're going to talk about phonetics, the vocal tract and the international phonemic alphabet. And uh, finally, we're going to go through phonology and the classification of sounds, consonants and vowels. All right, so let's continue. Firstly, linguistics. Linguistics is the study of how humans use languages, spoken and written languages. Okay, so in our video, well, we're going to be concentrating on the English language. First of all, we need to define what is language. What you're seeing here on your slide is the definition by a linguist named Susan Dort. Susan Dort says that the language is the particular form of words and speech used by the people of a country, area, or social group. Another definition also provided by Susan Dort is that language is the method of human communication using spoken or written words. Okay, then we have a theorist named George Yule. George Yule states that there are five different char characteristics in the human language, which are displacement, arbitrariness, productivity, cultural transmission, and duality. These five characteristics of human language belong to all languages, so not only to the English language, but to all languages. And what, which are these characteristics? Let's take a look at displacement first. This is the ability to use the language to talk about times, moments, places, people, other than the here and now, meaning when we have the ability to talk about the future or talk about the past and to be able to understand about those terms and concepts. This is called displacement because we are not talking about the here and now, but about abstract concepts. Then we have arbitrariness. This means that it says here, there is generally no natural inherent relationship between the signs we produce and their meaning. Basically, we're talking about writing. In some languages, we're going to use some uh, letters or some cryptographics, just like Japanese, for example, or Chinese with their, with their symbologies. And, and that will mean something for the people who speak that language. But at the same time, it doesn't mean anything for the people who speak languages like English or Spanish. And uh, if we take a look at the Hebrew language, for example, we see the concepts in the, the letters, the aliphat of Hebrew language. It has concepts instead of letters. So this is called arbitrariness that will be able, we will be able to attach meaning to a cryptographic. Okay. Then we have productivity. It says this is the characteristics of human, uh, the characteristic of human language that allows us to continuously create new utterances. An utterance is a spoken sentence. So it says there we we are able to combine building bricks, meaning lexical sets or words or phrases, in order to create something new. Just like we talked in the history of English lesson. Uh, stating about William Shakespeare creating more than 2,000 new idioms and words. Well, that ability has to do with productivity, to be able to produce new words, new concepts with the sounds that, that we have. The next characteristics of human language is cultural transmission. It says <clears throat> it is referred to how languages are acquired, how we transmit the language. And it says there is an assumption that there is no genetic component which will enable a child to simply start speaking at, cer at a certain age. Okay, we're talking about George Jewell characteristics and his own research. Cultural transmission, then we will see later when we talk about Noam Chomsky, who will state that we have something that is called universal grammar, 
which is an innate ability in our brain to produce any language, even if we haven't been exposed to that language. But according to George Joule, just for, for this uh, lesson, George Joule says that there is no nothing that says or that proves that we can produce a language without being exposed to that language. So we need to be exposed, according to you, we need to be exposed to the language so we can start speaking. Finally, the last characteristic of human language, according to George Jill, is duality. Duality is also called double articulation, and it refers to two separate layers of language working together. It says, it provides us with a pool of sounds which we can combine. And if we had them in isolation, we will not give any meaning. And at the same time, we have an unlimited number of sounds that if we put together, we can create new words. Also, this duality may mean that in some languages, we have words or sounds that will mean nothing in another language. And uh, well, that is called duality. And this is language. Let's go to the next slide. The features of a language. Okay. The language has features and suprasegmental features. In today's lesson, we're only concentrating on some of, of these features of a language. Okay. The first one is phonetics. Phonetics refers to the sounds of a speaking, just the sound. So if I do only one sound, like ah, that is a phonetic. Phonology is the organization of those sounds put together to create words, organization of the sounds of speaking. Then we have morphology, which has to do with also the writing ability. And it's basically word formation, how we can create words to produce nouns, adverbs, adjectives, and all this grammar uh, part of the speech. Then we have syntax, which is basically the order of the words and phrases, in other words, grammar. Then we have semantics. Semantics is an interpretation of, and meaning of the phrases and utterances, uh, either if we hear or if we read the language. Finally, pragmatics is the meaning in context in a discourse. So phrases may mean something if you read it, but if you read if you read it alone, but if you read the whole context, it might have a total different meaning. So these are the features of language. Now we're going to concentrate on phonetics and phonology for this lesson. So phonetics, the just the study of the sounds that we produce at speaking. In order to produce sounds, then we have the vocal tract. The vocal tract, as you see in this image is all the parts of our body that are involved in producing sounds. So everything is related to this part and internal organs of our head, but it also includes the larynx and in some charts you will also see the diaphragm included because everything is related and it's involved in the production of sounds. So I will recommend you to take a look at this, um, at this image and memorize the vocal tract. Okay, let us continue. All right, we have the International Phonemic Alphabet. In the English language, well, the International Phonemic Alphabet for English language, because there are, a there are actually thousands of sounds that we humans can produce. But out of those thousands of sounds, we choose the ones that fit into some languages. For example, in the Spanish language, we have only five sounds for vowels, a, e, i, o, u, and that's all. But in the English language, we have, especially in the British English language, we have 12 vowels, 12 vowel sounds, not letters. This is totally different from letters. In the English language, we have 12, British English language, we have 12 vowel sounds. That's why it's sometimes difficult for Spanish speakers to uh, sound like a native. And, uh, and that's the, the thing that produces accents, because we're not used in our native language to produce these 12 sounds for vowels. It's like having 12 vowels. So, and then we have consonants. And at the same time, in the consonants, 
there are no um well we do not have some consonants from the english in spanish such as the one that i am showing here we do not have that sound in spanish which sounds like an mm. we don't have this sound in spanish which is the z. also i am giving you um an ipa it, it is provided to you in the link for the course it is an ipa chart the same chart you're seeing here but in the program which you can download to your computer and click on the different letters to hear. You can also use an app which is called Sounds Right. And uh, you can download it from the App Store or from the Play Store. It belongs to the British Council and it's exactly this same chart. So you can listen to it and practice it. Okay, let's continue. Well, that was phonetic, vocal tract and the international phonemic alphabet because they are only sounds. But now we have phonology, which is, if you remember the features of language, phonology is how is the order or the organization of the sounds. So we have the classification of sounds. Sounds are classified basically in two, consonants and vowels. The definition of a consonant is just a sound that is obstructed somehow in the vocal tract, somewhere in the vocal tract. Vowel, the definition of a vowel is basically sounds that are not obstructed in the vocal tract. So those are the two classification of sounds, vowels and consonants. Now, consonants have their own classification. Consonants have their own classification. And here they are. Now, this is going to take a while. So I would prefer to tell you more about this in our, in our class, but I will quickly explain. The classification of consonants are divided in three parts. Place of articulation, okay, which is the place where in the vocal tract we are producing the sound. Manner of articulation, which is basically how we are doing, we are moving our muscles to produce sound. And finally, we have something that is called voicing. Voicing is basically if our sounds, if the sounds that we are producing are vibrating, produce vibrations somewhere in the vocal tract, or do not produce vibration in the vocal tract. So there are three ways to classify the sounds. Place of articulation, manner of articulation, and voicing. We are talking about the sounds that we checked in the, book, in the International Phonemic Alphabet. These are the sounds that we are classifying. The, these consonants are the sounds that we are classifying here. So you can take a look at this chart. Then we have place. Place of articulation will be labial, which means both lips. We use lips. Coronal, which basically uses the teeth and the back part of the teeth and the palate as well in the vocal tract. And dorsal, which basically uses the throat and the back part of the palate. So those are the places that we are using. So a sound can be bilabial, for example. The sound of a p is a bilabial sound. But now we have a manner of articulation. This is called stop, or it is also called plosive. It is a stop because we stop the sound. It's plosive because it sounds like an explosion there when, you, when we produce it between our two lips. So we have a labial, it's a bilabial stop or plosive. And in this case, it's a voiceless sound because if you do, you're not producing vibration. But the sound that you have below, it produces vibration. You feel it in your lips. So therefore, it's a bilabial, plosive or stop, voiced or voiceless sound. In the same way, we will do with the, with the rest of the sounds. We have a labiodental. Fricative, which means there is friction, voiced in, in the case of the v and the case of the f, which has no vibration, is voiceless. So you can study this chart to have more uh, information about each one of the consonant sounds. Anyway, for the purpose of the Ceneval exams, for those people who are taking this uh, Ceneval exam, you're going to be asked to match and to relate the sounds the classification of sounds to the diagrams. Therefore, here in this 
uh, document, you will have all of the diagrams related to the different um, sounds, to the different phonetics. Okay, so you can see the diagram here, how the vocal tract is being uh, collocated to produce these two sounds. For example, in this, in this alveolar plosive, it means that we are using alveolar means this part of the vocal tract, which is the back part of the upper teeth. All right. And it's plosive because actually you produce an explosion. It's, it's also called a stop sound with your tongue to produce t or to produce th. Now, the t is a voiceless sound and the th is a voiced sound. And the difference is uh, because of the vibration we produce. So in the same way, we you can take a look at the diagrams and try to, to do the diagram in your own mouth, in your own vocal tract. All right, so let's continue. I will recommend you to study all of the figures here because they include all of the consonants classified. Then finally, we have the classification of vowels, which are classified in a very different way than consonants. Consonants are classified on the place, on manner that we obstruct the sounds, if you remember the definition of consonant. But vowels are classified into how we collocate the whole uh, vocal cavity and the tongue. Basically, by doing it high, that's where we collocate our tongue when we produce the sound of a vowel. And also how we collocate our lips in the position of our mouth when we produce vowel sounds. So it can be a high, close or open. Close, it is it's it's how we how it's like we close our mouth or open we have it mid high refers to the tongue where our tongue is at the high part of our vocal cavity mid in the middle part low in the lower part close or open is the the lips how close or open they are then we have rounded and on un, unrounded and rounded that's how we put our lips so for example we have a high close and also front, central, and back. This is also the position of a ma of a tongue. The, the tongue can be high, the lips are close, and the, the tongue is high front. So we do the e. So if you see, the lips are closed. E, e. And if you see here in blue, it is unrounded because our lips are actually going like a smile instead of round. So you do E, but the one of the U, the lips then become rounded. That's why it says here, rounded. So basically, if you follow this chart, you can see the, mo the movements of our mouth, of our vocal cavity, and the tongue position to produce the 12 vowel sounds that belong to the British English um, phonetic. Okay. So I hope that you have uh, understood this. You can take a look at the resources and, and do your own research. Time to practice. You have some games here and some quizzes to play. And so you can study and practice the information provided in this lesson. Okay, here are the references we used, but this is not all. We have to continue with the rest of the, of the features of language. And of course, we're going to be talking more about phonology, okay, and the suprasegmental features of language in our next video. Therefore, the homework or the assignment that I am asking you to, to do in this case is to investigate. I'm going to type the investigation I will require this time is what are the supra segmental features of language what are the supra segmental features of language and what what is connected speech that's what we're working with okay what are the supra segmental features of language and what is connected speech well thank you very much for watching this video and see you next time